Alright, good morning. My name is Whitney Carmen. I'm the Grayson County Agriculture and Natural Resources Agent and today I have with me Evan Tate. Yep, and I'm the uh, Ag Agent in Hancock County. Uh, today we're actually going to do a demonstration today on the pregnancy testing for beef cattle and the techniques that it takes to do that and the options that you have. And first we're going to talk about the supplies and how to go about doing that before we actually do the demonstration. So Evan, what do we have here today to start out with? Cool. So um, depending on, you can get these blood test kits just about anywhere. Um, your AI suppliers, a lot of those companies have those. That's where this one come from. Uh, but they essentially ship you everything that you need in a box. Uh -huh. and, and it's really kind of a cool deal. And so when you open up your box, the first thing that you'll find on top is a set of instructions, which are really ha handy. Yeah, I would say so. Make sure that you follow those if at all possible. It also has record keeping sheets in it. Uh, it tells us how to label our tubes uh, that we'll collect blood in. And uh, so we'll have all that. All right, what else you got in there? So also in our box um, comes a few other things. One, a needle holder, which is a very handy tool, and we'll demonstrate that here shortly. Packs of blood tubes in a biohazard secured tube that we can turn around and ship back in. And then a, a tube of needles as well that we use to bleed the cows with. And it's important to use different needles for different animals in that situation because we're trying to get a, a specific type of blood test. Abs absolutely. And so we will use a different needle and a different blood tube on every single animal here today. We will not cross anything over from one animal to another. Mm -hmm. And that's important because we have a sharps container over there and, and we want to make sure to demonstrate that today. If you don't have a sharps container that looks like that, you can always use a dish detergent container that is plastic, something that can be disposed of but that is not going to, sh to nick someone whenever they're taking it to uh, the, the garbage. You so. bet. And so essentially when we go cow side, um, we'll need three things but to prepare for that, uh, we will wear a different pair of gloves with every cow so that we don't contaminate our sample from one to the other. Uh, if the cow has a lot of excess debris underneath her tail where, we, where we're going to collect blood, uh, we'll take a paper towel, some alcohol, clean that spot, uh, or use an alcohol swipe uh, swab that you can buy. And then like Whitney said, we'll certainly be utilizing a sharps container in this project as well. So you mentioned before you go on, you mentioned that taking it behind the tail head, is there another option you can do on the cow to, if you don't want to take it behind the tail head? So uh, for beginners, the, underneath the tail head would be my preference. Okay. And, and quite honestly, even for those that take a lot of samples, I think they would still tell you that that is the easiest spot mm -hmm. uh, to get. Uh, for somebody that is confident in their understanding of anatomy, they can use the jugular vein up underneath the throat. Um, however, for me, uh, I stick mainly with the tail head. Okay, that's, yeah. that's a great option. Yep. And so essentially, a couple of things to note. These are just red top blood tubes, but they are vacuum sealed. And so there's a vacuum inside that tube that will actually draw the blood. And so anytime that we puncture this, we, we release the vacuum. And so that, that becomes important here shortly. But we have our needle holder, and then we have a bleed needle, and we'll essentially screw that in. What I like to do is I keep this in my pocket. I don't use that just yet. And we'll go in and we'll insert that into the vein of the cow. We'll take off the top, insert it into the vein. And when we're confident that we're in the vein, then we will apply this tube up through the holder and then pierce the vacuum and it will draw the blood out. And we're looking for about three cc's on this particular one. It actually has a red line at the top where the three cc mark. Uh, some cows bleed faster than others, mm -hmm. some bleed better than others. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if at the end, if we need to go back and, and find another place to sample, we can take the top off the tube mm -hmm. uh, and do it in a more manual fashion. Okay, so you've, you're taking these samples and we're record keeping. How many people do you think would, it would take to help you or do you have to have a lot of people on hand in order to yep. do this? So you can do this by yourself quite easily. Okay. Um, but with that said, an extra set of hands to do record keeping to help things uh, stay clean. Um, once again, just to, the best possible sample that we send to the lab will, will help our uh, results tremendously. Okay, and so with that being said, you've got the sample completed, you've got everything filled out, what, what next? 
So we will actually use the box and the biosecure blood tube holders that come in the box. Uh, we will have all these identified per mm -hmm. cow. And on our sign-in sheet here, mm -hmm. uh, it has four different labs that we can use for this particular test. Mm -hmm. And we'll mail it to one of those four labs. Uh, and usually in about 10 days, we'll get our set of results back. And those results will have a couple of different things written beside each of the cow identifying numbers. It'll either be positive, they're pregnant. It'll be negative, they're not. Or it'll be positive with an asterisk beside it. And that asterisk will have a code. And that code may be a couple of things to where they don't believe there's enough protein in her for her to maintain that pregnancy. And so uh, she may be a, a cow that we retest at a later date at that point. Okay, and so with that being said, you've got a pregnancy test and you're doing a blood test early on in pregnancy. So how many days pregnant do you think that they need to be or what's the protocol for that in order for them to tell get a positive pregnancy test? So this test is called a DG29, and the 29 represents the 29th day of pregnancy in, in that particular deal. Uh, but uh, most of those 29, 30 days on a blood test uh, will suffice. Okay. All right. And that's important because as, as you're, if you're a beef cattle producer, you want to know in your herd if you've got a pregnant cow or not, or a heifer in that case, because it's an economic value at that point. You bet. It's probably the most important uh, management tool that we can do post breeding on cattle mm -hmm. uh, at this point. And so, um, from a cow, from a cull cow standpoint and from a cow management standpoint, it's actually it's very imperative that we do that. And, and the cool thing about this, um, we don't need a veterinarian on mm -hmm. farm to do this. If mm -hmm. you're comfortable giving a shot or giving a vaccine to a cow. Uh, you'll be more than comfortable taking taking a vial of blood. All right, so is there any tips or anything that you, I know you've done these several times, is there any tips for a producer who's just now starting out? I know you said it's easy, but if any kind of uh, tricks of the trade in order to do that? Yeah, um, so the first time I did it, um, I messed the vacuum up in tubes, okay. a lot of tubes, and so I don't, um, I don't suggest messing with the tube, for one. Leave okay. it intact, but go ahead and fill out all the information. Go ahead and put your cow identifiers on there. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and, and you can pre-fill out the night before mm -hmm. uh, your paperwork as well. Uh, it'll correspond with the number on our tube. And, and so go ahead and get that done. That way, uh, whenever we read a tag number coming through the chute, we can look, look over in our vial, uh, find the correct one, and then take the sample. And then after the sample, we don't want them setting out in direct sunlight. Depending on the time of year, maybe temperature is a factor. And so I just take a cooler uh, with me uh, with a, a small ice pack, something that doesn't freeze, uh, but keeps things at relatively room temperature. And so we'll set those in with the top up um, like that in the bottom of a cooler and just let them chill out that way until we send them off to the lab. All right. Okay, so as you can see, this is a neat thing that you can do and a, and a thing that you can do for your production efforts in order to help maximize your profit on your farm. And it's something that after we demonstrate today, we hope that you will be able to do confidently on your farm. Absolutely. All right, so as you can see here, the tag numbers, I'm going to use this and correspond with the pre pregnancy test number. So I'm going to indicate it on this or on this thing here, and then I'm also going to write it down here. So her number is XN64, and so I'm going to write that here. And it's good if you have a ballpoint pen or maybe a, one of the slim Sharpies so that you can have uh, good eligibility on these on these things here that we're doing today. So we're at the, at the rear of the cow where we're going to take blood here momentarily. Uh, I've got just some cheap isopropyl alcohol. Uh, the cow is fairly clean, but nonetheless, we want a good clean sample coming in. Uh, and so I've got just a cheap paper towel, and I'll just put a dab of isopropyl alcohol on it, and I'll clean the bottom of the tail. And, and while I'm doing that, I'm kind of feeling uh, the spinal processes of the tail. Uh, we'll feel those bones sticking down. Um, so we want to make sure that we're just clean. And we're going to clean roughly about a foot of her tail from the, from the inside of her tail head down. Uh, that'll give us a good spot. And once it's clean, we'll kind of let it dry as we get our needle ready. Okay, so we're now ready to prep our needle to go back to the rear end of the cow. Uh, and so we have our needle holder here. And, and this thing isn't a requirement, but it just makes things a lot easier, I think, holding the needle and getting it in the proper position. 
And so we have a, have a needle here that has caps on opposite ends. On this particular one, we're going to take the yellow cap, but it has the rubber, um, has the rubber drain on it. And we're essentially just going to screw that in to the needle holder. And then as we move around to the back of the cow, then we'll, we'll put the blood tube on. Uh, but we'll lift the tail and we'll lift it straight up. And we'll feel for a couple of bumps. And so those bumps are the bones that are po poking down here. And we're looking for the valley between the bones right in the center. And that'll be the coccygeal vein that runs down the center of the tail at the bottom. And so we'll take the top off the needle. And so we're going to insert the needle at a 90 degree angle. Okay. And when we get to a stopping point with our needle, a lot of times we can pull just slightly back and we'll be close to the vein. If we're in the vein, the blood should start to flow. And we can see it flowing now. And there it is. And then we will then dispose this needle uh, into our sharps container. So we have a sharps container here. This is our used needle from the sample that we just took. And so we're going to remove that from our holder and we'll put it in our sharps container for proper disposal. Next we have our blood tube with our sample in it. And these things, what I like to do is keep a cooler here that's relatively cool. It doesn't have to be freezing. As a matter of fact, we don't want them to freeze. Uh, so just relatively cool, room temperature, 60 or 70 degrees, whatever the case may be. And I like to set those with the red top up. And so we'll lean it up against the top of the tray in the bottom of a cooler or stick them into a piece of styrofoam, something like that, to keep them upright uh, before we send them off. Uh, when we get ready to mail our sample back, uh, our kit that we originally had uh, come with these flip top containers. Uh, there's about five or six of these tubes in each of these containers and so we'll put all of our samples in it, we'll seal it up, we'll actually use the box that the kit come back into um, and we'll mail it off that away. A lot of the times our kits come with pre-printed uh, pre mailing labels and so you can just stick that mailing label back on and it'll go straight to your lab quickly. Mm -hmm.